So welcome to numerical methods. We are still in our section on random number generation. And after looking at pseudo random number generation, we saw the very nice result, result of the Coxma Lovka inequality that involved the discrepancy of a sequence, which then works as a bound, yeah, which then gives us the convergence rate of the Monte Carlo approximation. This motivated the search for infinite sequence such that every subsequence has low discrepancies. So these are the low discrepancy sequences. We started looking at low discrepancy sequences in one dimension. The Van der Korput sequence was a nice example. And yeah, so now in the next session, I would like to look at low discrepancy sequences in higher dimensions. Before we talk about low discrepancy sequences in higher dimensions, I would like to do a small excursion, namely here in this coding session, there was an experiment mentioned, which we did not do in the last session, and which I would like to do with you now. So the coding session was this one. So we know that the Van der Korput sequence has a discrepancy that is log n divided by n, yeah, of the order of log n divided by n. And here you should study the discrepancy for different sequences. You find the code here in this discrepancy experiment that is in this uh, package of our lecture repository. And I would like to do this because it links nicely back to our Monte Carlo convergence rate. So recall the Monte Carlo convergence rate. So this was here our estimate. We had this little drawback that it holds only in probability. Yeah. But okay, you know now that you can remove this by introducing the discrepancy and then you replace this one here. So this part by the cox malavka inequality. And then for Monte Carlo, so for a sequence of random numbers, we had the convergence rate one divided by square root of n. So now with the cox malavka inequality, this one divided by square root of n, which you have here, is replaced by the discrepancy of the sequence, which we have here. So the constant in front is the variation of the function in both estimates, yeah. One, the variance, yeah, here this uh, variation in the sense of Hardy and Krause. And now with the van der Korput sequence, we had that this discrepancy here is maybe better than one divided by square root of n. It is log n divided by n. So we had this result that the star discrepancy for the van der Korput sequence is log n divided by n. So let's go back to the definition of the discrepancy and calculate the discrepancy. So this was the definition for the discrepancy. So what we do is we count the number of points in a certain interval. For the star discrepancy, actually, the interval is starting in zero. And we compare this to the volume of that interval. So if you start in zero, actually, it's the volume of that interval in one dimension is just b. We had this little nice illustration here. And you see that the function we have to look at is just this volume. So in one dimension, this volume is just x minus the number of points that you count in this interval divided by the total number of points. So the percentage of points that you have in this interval so you have to distinguish between the open interval, which is depicted here, 
and then you look at the maximum values and the closed interval, and then you look at minus the minimum values. So what I like to do in this uh, coding experiment here is to implement the discrepancy for one dimension. And we could also just uh, draw this picture that we had on the previous uh, slide. So I don't do this live, yeah, would take a little bit longer. Let's just look into the code and I explain the code and then we run a few experiments with some sequences. And the nice little thing I would like to do is to calculate the discrepancy of the random sequence. So question is, if I calculate the discrepancy of a random number sequence yeah, generated by the pseudo random number, do I actually get the one divided by square root of n? So is the one divided by square root of n that we have in our probabilistic estimate just the discrepancy of a random sequence? So it's just that if here the xi's are generated ram randomly, then this generates the one divided by square root of n. So let's look at the code. So you find the code in this package. There's this discrepancy experiment. I have implemented a function that is called analyze. It gets some title that it is printing. Yeah. So what are we analyzing? And then it gets um, a sequence and this yeah, little complicated line here is just how we generate uh, the sequence. So here, for example, you see that I just rescribe a given sequence of five points. Actually, this is the sequence that is listed here on the slide. So that one, which I'm calculating here, or that one, which I'm analyzing. Yeah, I have this function analyze. So let's have a look how this function analyze looks like. So analyze first prints. You know? So it prints here our little label in front, and then it prints the value of the discrepancies for this list of sample points. So let's have a look at this get discrepancy. So first thing is what we do, we sort this list. You know? Because also here on the picture, yeah, we were drawing this graph. So we go from left to right. So we sort this list. Then we initialize our yeah, discrepancy here to zero. And yeah, we would like to take the maximum, you know, the slow, lowest value of the disc discrepancy is uh, zero. And then we walk through all these points. So I walk through all these points. So these are these guys here. So first I take the thing when I have not yet counted the point. So we have zero point there and I just take the, the uh, volume. So this here is my lambda. So this is point here on top. So this is now lambda minus how many points have we counted in the open interval. So excluding the first point. So my counter is zero. So excluding the first point, just take the volume minus zero divided by the number of sample points. So this is here the first value. Then I increase the counter, the number of points that we count. So this means now the first point is inside the interval that I count. And I take now the opposite difference, the number of points that I've counted minus the size of the interval. The size of the interval is just always the, sample po the position of the sample point. So here I evaluate lambda of 0 to x minus 1 i divided by n. And here I divide I evaluate i plus 1 divided by n minus the volume of the interval from 0 to x. This is just the x then. Yeah, then I take the maximum of these two. So which of the two distances here is 
larger, that one, or that one. And then I take the maximum of the previous calculated discrepancy, yeah, and this maximum. So I maximize over all the, these things. So this is just the calculation of the discrepancy as you have it here on this slide. Another thing I do is I plot, yeah, with the label as a small title, I plot this red function here, this red line. So this code for the plotting is here below. Yeah? So you see the function maps just x to x minus count the number of points that are smaller than x. Yeah? So count these. Yeah? So this is just taking all the points, filtering the points where the value of the points point is smaller than x. This is then counting this, and we divide by the n. So this is just the definition of the function, which I'm then plotting here with some labeling. So that's the code. Yeah, now let's run this code for different sequences. So first thing I do is I generate a sequence with Mersenne Twister, a pseudo number random generator, take the five elements, the first five elements. So actually this guy returns uh, a primitive, a Java primitive, a double. So I would like to have a list of doubles. You'll see this is your list of doubles object. Yeah. So you have to use this box. A little bit clumsy. Yeah. Okay. This will convert the double to a double here with a capital letter to an object. And then you have a sequence of objects, these doubles, and you convert it to a list. Okay, so forget about these details and just look at what it's inside here. This is a pseudo number, pseudo random number sequence, the first five elements. This is the first five elements of the Van der Korput sequence, the first seven elements of the Van der Korput sequence, the first nine elements of the Van der Korput sequence. These are now the values that are used by the Van der Korput sequence if you refine up to a level of one divided by eight, so this is here what the van der Korput sequence does, but actually it is not the way that the van der Korput sequence places these points. So actually the van der Korput sequence first place one half, then one over four, one half plus one over four, then one over eight and one half plus one over eight. So now you could think, okay, he placed it first here and then the second one here. So what would happen if you just go from left to right and fill everything from left to right? So he would fill the next step, not to the five over eight, but to the three over eight. So it's, Similar to the Fanta corporate sequence, what we do here on top, but actually we are not distributing it in the same way. Yeah, and here below is now the interesting other experiment that we take um, a pseudo random number generator, Mersenne Twister, we generate a random number sequence, and here I generate two, three, 100,000. Yeah. 100,000 points, 100,000 sample points, actually 100,000 plus one. And I just check that uh, I print now my analysis. Uh, so I do not want to generate now 100,000 discre discrepancy values and 100,000 plots. So I, I perform my analysis whenever the value of points is a power of 10. Uh, so I will uh, print 1, 10, 100, 1,000, and so on. Yeah? So I will print a selection of these guys. Let's run now this uh, little experiment here. Okay, so here below you see the results. Maybe I move this window a bit here. These are our results. And here we have the corresponding plots 
of these uh, functions. So this is here the first line. We generate a random sequence. We place the points randomly. So these are five points. One, two, three, four, five points. And the red line is the discrepancy. Yeah, discrepancy is a bit poor because actually you have many points here. So you immediately jump down twice. Yeah, the one divided by n. The one divided by n is a one over five here. And then it takes a long time to ramp up again, yeah, until you jump down again. The next one would be the Fanta corporate sequence, also with five points. So this one is here. And you see now here, in contrast to the previous one, the points are more evenly distributed. Yeah. So the jumps and the slope that is moving up yeah, are a little bit better balanced. And the discrepancy yeah, is, yeah, Right, okay, it is a one divided by four. Actually, with five points, yeah, you have six intervals, and you would expect that you could reach a one divided by six. So the discrepancy is not optimal. Maybe we take a few notes here. So these are our results here. And this one is better than the random one, but not optimal. Optimal would be the one divided by six, yeah? Placing five points would create six intervals. So I would go ramp up, yeah? I would have the one divided by six. Well, for the Fanta corporate sequence, actually, whenever the number of points is a b to the power of k minus one, so for example, b here equals two, two to the power of k minus one. This means I have exactly two to the power of k intervals. And because of the way how the Fanta corporate sequence places these intervals, yeah, actually now all the intervals have the same size yeah, and I have an equipartitioning. So in that case, the discrepancy is exactly one divided by n plus one, yeah? because you have n plus one intervals. Yeah? It is exactly one divided by n plus one, so a b to the minus k. You can verify this here in our experiment. So for n equals seven, I have eight intervals, and I get exactly the discrepancy to be a one divided by eight. So this is here the picture, yeah? n equals seven, and you see it's nicely distributed. Yeah? All the points are evenly distributed. I have the zigzag curve. So this one here is the optimal case. So we have a one divided by eight. Well, in my estimate for the discrepancy, I had this log n here. So in between the n's, yeah, where n is equal to b to the power of k minus one, I need to refine my interval, but I cannot create the equipartitioning with a single step. So I need a few steps to perform the refinement. And during that refinement, the discrepancy is becoming worse. That's an interesting thing. And that's actually where this log of n is coming from. So here in my code, you see that if I move to nine sample points, the discrepancy is coming worse. So you see this in this picture, moving now to nine, points here. Yeah. If you compare now with the seven, it's not so evenly distributed. I have some points, there are too many points in a certain region, and certain other regions are still empty because yeah, I need a little bit of time to fill all the different regions. So here's the problem is actually here. Yeah. I moved here a little bit down. So you see that discrepancy can become worse. But the way the van der Korput sequence refines the interval is not too bad. This you see here, if you now compare these different, different ways of placing the refinement with the one divided by eight, yeah, either in the way as the Fender corporate sequence does it. So you place it here and then you go to the other side and place it there. Yeah? So this is 
this one compared to you just go from left to right. You place it here and here. So this is now the comparison of these two cases here. Yeah, You get an 0 0.3 for the left case and an 0 0.25 yeah, for the case how the Fender Corporate sequence does it. Yeah? So this is here in the code, these two different ways of refining the sequence. So for the picture, this is going from left to right. With the refinement, we have too many points on the left. Yeah? So we jump down very quickly, too few points on the right, and placing it in this other way, yeah, eases a little bit the problem. Okay, and now let's go to the interesting thing. What happens if we take a random number generator, a pseudo-random number generator, a random sequence, and calculate the discrepancy? So this is how the picture looks like. So for just one point, yeah, I have a huge discrepancy. Actually, the point is far to the right here. So the discrepancy is almost one. Yeah, I ramp up. Yeah, I have not filled the left side completely. Then if I place uh, 10 points, yeah, it looks like that. Okay, still you have quite huge gaps here. Okay, with the random points and many points here. Yeah, you see I jump down, down. Yeah. This is 100 points. Yeah. Discrepancy slowly converges here to zero. 1,000 points, 10,000 points, 100,000 points. Yeah, and now look at the figures that we get here. Yeah, this re really looks a little bit as if we can see the one divided by square root of n. Okay, so roughly you know, going from here to here, you have a factor of 100 in the points, so 10 to the power of 2, but you have a factor of 1 divided by 10, so 10 to the minus 1, in the discrepancy. Yeah? So an 0 0.2, yeah, 4, becomes an 0 0.02, no, actually an 0 0.017. Similarly, if you do the next step, going from here to here, you have a factor of 100 in the points, yeah, 10 to the power of 2, but a factor of 1 divided by 10 in the discrepancy. Actually, here, quite quite uh, precise. Yeah. And roughly, you also have the same in the other parts. Okay, here you go from an 0.9 to an 0.07. Yeah, and also, which one did I forgot? This one here, an 0.07 to an 0.007. So actually you have for both these comparisons, factor of 100 in N and factor of one divided by 10 in the discrepancy. So it looks really as if the D star here of my sequence is one divided by square root of n. So nice thing is that you now understand where this square root of n comes from. Uh, it comes from the randomness that is not really equidistributing the points. Yeah? So you lose something because you have here these, these gaps here in the placing of the random numbers. Okay, so that is a nice experiment. Yeah, so you have here this uh, function that can calculate the discrepancy and that can create the plot for a one dimensional sequence. And maybe you can play a little bit with this here in our code repository. Yeah, that was my small excursion now illustrating you that our Coxma Lovka inequality really links back to the probabilistic result. Yeah, discrepancy of a random sequence is 1 divided by square root of n, and we got really rid of this probabilistic nature in the estimate.